To optimize our tax situation, let's say that we know we need to be performing Roth conversions. Are we better off performing one mega Roth conversion, converting everything at once and just ripping the Band-Aid off? Or are we better off performing smaller conversions over time and spreading out that tax liability? This is one of the most common questions we receive here at Safeguard and is one we're gonna answer in today's video. Let's get into it. Before we start to analyze whether a mega Roth conversion makes sense, it's first important to understand that the US is underneath what's called a progressive tax system. This means that the more income that you show, the higher your marginal tax rate will be. And so when we first start showing income, whether through wages, IRA distributions, or Roth conversions, we're taxed at 0% underneath the standard deduction. From there, we start to scale the 10%, 12%, 22%, 24% percent brackets, and so on. Now, this doesn't change whether you're a single filer or a married filer. The only thing that changes is when you start to cross into those given brackets. Now, you can see with the example on the right-hand side of the screen, for somebody that has $50,000 of taxable income, they are taxed in each of these given ranges at that various bracket. And so 10%, 12%, and finally 22%. If they showed $50,001, that last dollar would be taxed at 22%. So when we're thinking about something like a mega Roth conversion, we can already start to see that this might not make sense at the end of the day. If we're converting a million dollar IRA, whether we're a single filer or a married filer, we're pushing ourselves into that highest marginal bracket and thus losing money to taxes. Well, hold on one second, because we know that when we're in retirement, based on the various tax hurdles that we may see, we might see spikes within our marginal rate. For instance, here is the 2022 tax graph for a client that we have that resides in Colorado. Now this is a married couple, they're both on social security and they're over 65. So they're having to worry about things like Medicare premium increases. Now how you read the graph on the screen is you first look at the X axis, that's the horizontal line that goes across the bottom. And as they start to show additional income, 50,000, 100,000, 150,000, you can see their corresponding marginal tax rate on the Y axis. So the 20, 40, 60 is their marginal tax rate. And as you can see, as they're retired, they have various tax hurdles that are leading to a higher marginal tax rate. Everything from the social security tax torpedo to a medical expense deduction fading out to capital gain bump zones to IRMA that you see in these dotted lines, all of these things can lead to a higher marginal rate. So we actually see looking at the range around $50,000 that if they start to show additional income, they will actually see a very high marginal rate, above 60% when you factor in state income taxes and all the various tax hurdles that they will be subject to. And so this type of complex tax graph is what makes some retirees want to convert all at once. If we take those given tax hurdles and penalties one time, then we can avoid them going forward into the future and not ever have to worry about them again. And know that if you're in this mindset, you're not alone, even from a professional standpoint. I see on various forums as well as on Twitter that there are quite a few professionals that actually recommend their clients do exactly this perform one large conversion to avoid having all that complexity down the road. But again, the question is, is this optimal or are you paying a very large cost for that kind of simplicity? How do we even know that a Roth conversion makes sense? It seems like we need to be juggling a lot of things within this equation. The growth trajectory of our IRAs, the various tax hurdles we will see. Well, conversion math is actually quite simple because it all comes down to the rates that you're paying today versus the rates you're avoiding in the future. So we can leave everything else behind. The growth trajectory doesn't matter. When we withdraw the money doesn't matter. It all comes down to the rates that we are paying. If we're paying a lower rate today than we would be avoiding in the future, a Roth conversion makes sense. On the screen, I have a very simplistic example showing an equal rate and showing how these are tax equivalent scenarios. I have a IRA that we're not doing any conversions on and we're paying 22% at the end of 20 years versus performing a Roth conversion right away, paying 22% in taxes. And then again, at the end of these 20 years, we'll notice that we have the exact same amount in both of these given situations. We have a tax equivalent scenario, but what about all of the other tax hurdles that we may see? Take something like Medicare premium increases, IRMA. How do we factor this into the tax rate equation? Well, at the end of the day, what is a tax? All a tax is, is an expense for showing additional income. That's all IRMA is as well. And so we can basically take IRMA or various other expense increases that we will see in our retirement and we can translate that to a tax rate. We're gonna be focused on the third IRMA threshold zone and for a married couple that falls between $228,000 
and $284,000 of modified adjusted gross income. Now, IRMA is a tax cliff, meaning it doesn't matter if they show $228,001 or $283,999. They will have this Medicare premium increase in both cases. Because this is a tax cliff, once you fall within the zone, you wanna make sure you're using the full amount of this zone to spread out that premium increase. And so if we take $122 a month, we multiply by two because there are two people within this couple. We then multiply this by 12 and divide by 56,000, the amount of room within this IRMA threshold and we find that this would lead to a marginal increase of 5.23%. Now this person would be subject to the 24% tax rate within this zone, and so when we add on that 5.23% marginal spike from IRMA, their marginal tax rate will at the very least be 29.23%. And so given this, does a mega Roth conversion ever make sense? Well, let's look at a few examples. On the screen, you'll see an example of someone with a million dollar IRA balance. Now, this couple is married and they're living in Arizona. Arizona is a slight progressive tax system. Now, with this chart on the screen, we're looking at converting everything all at once or doing smaller conversions over time. And now, not too surprisingly, you can see that spreading out that conversion over time makes more sense. Again, this was our initial impression when we thought about having a progressive tax system within the US here. The more that we convert all at once, the higher rates we will be paying. Now, again, we have those marginal spikes that we need to be thinking about, but nonetheless, we can see that converting at least over time makes more sense than converting all in one year. If this couple converted everything in one year, they would be paying over $300,000 in taxes and over 30% effective tax rate on that conversion. If instead they were able to spread that conversion out over 10 years, Notice that they're paying less than 15% in taxes, less than $150,000. Now, note that this is a very simplistic example. We know that not everybody has five or 10 years for conversions until things like required minimum distribution start. Nonetheless, though, we can see that spreading that tax liability out over time makes more sense. We're now gonna look at a single filer with a slightly smaller IRA balance of only $750,000 and they reside in Florida, so a no income tax state. Now with this example, we do see that the math adjusts slightly. The rates that they are paying are going to be different, but nonetheless, the overall theme still applies. The more that they're able to spread out that given conversion, the better off their situation will be. So does spreading out that conversion always make sense then? Well, not so fast, because there will be times where uneven conversions make a bit more sense. For instance, on the screen, we have a tax graph of a single filer who is a Texas tax resident, and they're currently on ACA insurance and 60 years old. Now, we see that if they broke this up into 10 equal conversions, they'd be converting about $50,000 per year. But because of this person's situation, as they show additional income, they're gonna start to lose their ACA subsidy. And the loss of that ACA subsidy spikes their marginal rate high enough that they actually would want to be performing larger conversions than those smaller $50,000 conversions. You can see on the screen that as they show additional income, they're marginally increasing their rate because of losing that subsidy to the point that they're paying over 30% as a marginal rate. And so if they just stopped at that $50,000 mark, they'd essentially be locking in that higher marginal rate. In fact, they may be better off either performing smaller conversions or performing much larger conversions, pushing beyond that marginal spike and spreading out that tax liability across additional rate zones. And so know that there are some important considerations to factor in here. First, you obviously need to be factoring in all of the tax hurdles that you will see. You also need to be factoring in the amount of time that you have left for those given conversions. If you have three years to convert before seeing various tax hurdles, that's gonna be a different situation than if you have 10 years. Also know a big factor here as well is the underlying growth that we expect from that IRA. If we're looking to convert a $500,000 IRA and we're gonna do that over 10 years. If we perform $50,000 conversions and the growth within that IRA is more than 10% per year, our conversions aren't outpacing that given growth. But the critical takeaway here, as with most things in retirement, is binary decisions are typically the wrong solution. For instance, the binary situation on this spectrum would be no conversion or converting everything at once. Oftentimes, if we're trying to find the sweet spot for our given Roth conversion, it's somewhere in the middle, which means converting a little bit over time. There's almost always gonna be a middle ground that is optimal for our situation. As you can see in the past example that we showed, somebody converting all at once or somebody spreading it out over time, 
paid less than half in taxes by spreading it out over time. And so this is a subject that is worth diving into the complexity for. Also keep in mind that it almost never makes sense to convert all of your tax deferred balances. We have a video on this subject right here. For a lot of the same reasons we talked about in this video, leaving some within your tax deferred accounts to spread out into lower brackets over time can make a lot of sense. Click here to learn more and always remember you don't need more money, you need a better plan. Thanks for watching.